हेलो एवरी वन सो फॉर वी हैव लर्न द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ मेजरेबल सेट दैट इज लेबिक्यू मेजरेबल सेट नाउ इन दिस सेशन लेट मी टॉक अबाउट नॉन मेजरेबल सेट नॉन मेजरेबल सेट वन ऑफ द एग्जाम्पल फॉर नॉन मेजरेबल सेट इज ट्रांसलेशन मॉड्यूलो वन एंड इट इज डिनोटेड बाई द सिंबल जस्ट द प्लस एंड द डॉट ऑन द प्लस सो इट इज कॉल्ड एज ट्रांसलेशन मॉड्यूलो वन सो इट इज वन ऑफ द एग्जाम्पल फॉर नॉन मेजरेबल सेट and a translation modulo is translation modulo on 1 is defined as an element xy belongs to closed interval 0 open interval 1 then we can define a translation modulo on x and y in such a way that either you can denote it by plus a dot y or we can denote it by x you just put a plus inside the circle then followed by y so this represent a translation modulo so as per the definition of translation modulo this value will be equal to you are familiar with the step function so we are going to discuss in terms of step function so this value will be equal to x plus y if x plus y value is less than 1 as per the definition of translation modulo on 1 we can define when it belongs to the interval closed interval 0 and open interval 1 in such a way that it takes the value x x plus y if that value is less than 1 and it will be x plus y minus 1 if it is greater than or equal to 1 so this is what the step function is and it is definition for translation modulo now clearly i have told you for any set e which is subset of closed interval 0 and open interval 1 uh, suppose if it is a measurable set and let y be any element which belongs to the interval then also we can define a translation modulo e and y in such a way that we are going to add any element in e to y something like x plus x translation modulo y such that x will be in set e as y belongs to this interval and e i have chosen so x is the element in e so just by adding the element in that particular set i can obtain this so you see this is called as translation modulo of 1 on e fine it is clear that e plus translation modulo y is measurable fine in the sense this is just a symbol for what we say translation modulo and it is one of the example for non measurable set don't get confusion with that so one of the example for non uh, what we say non measurable set and it is defined like this now the thing is suppose if you are going to talk about an open interval e which is contained in the same particular interval then we can form a measurable set fine so what i am trying to say is translation modulo is non measurable anyhow if you are going to uh, talk with reference to open set e if you are going to consider translation modulo with open set e with an element y that will be measurable you remember this property so translation modulo of open set e with element y is measurable so thereby i can use m store of e translation modulo y will be equal to m store of e fine so you have to remember these two property now based on this concept we have a theorem and the theorem statement is suppose uh, if we have a uh, open set e which is contained in 0 1 closed interval 0 open interval 1 and which is measurable set as i already told you i have talking about open set e and an element in the same set then a translation modulo between e and y is measurable so just now i have told you and i have to prove the same and measure of e of translation modulo i'm sorry measure of translation modulo of e and y remember the symbol is called as translation modulo is equal to m e here e plus i y is called as translation modulo of e by y we read this as translation modulo of e by y fine now coming to the proof let me write the given data again what is the given data here we have e is subset of closed interval 0 and open interval 1 moreover an element y is also in the same interval closed interval 0 and 1 now uh, by these two i can say translation modulo of these two elements will be contained in 0 1 right why because y is also in the same interval and e is also in the same interval that is subset and y belongs to this interval so i can write the translation modulo is perfectly a subset of this interval right now let me define two sets e1 and e2 in such a way that e1 is equal to intersection of this and e2 is equal to e intersection 
वन माइनस वाई कमा वन वाट आई हेव डन इज आई हेव कंसिडर द इंटरवल जीरो वन आई हेव स्प्लिटेड इन टू टू लाइक वन आई एम गोइंग टू राइट हियर सो आई आई एम टेकिंग इन बिटवीन वैल्यू लाइक दिस सो दैट इज वॉट आई हेव डिफाइंड हियर सो आई हेव टेकन विथ इंटरसेक्शन with e so i have taken this as e1 and this as e2 clearly i can say e1 and e2 are disjoint right so when do we say it is disjoint let me prove that also when their intersection is equal to null set so if you are going to take intersection of these two sets i can write this as 0 comma 1 minus y intersection 1 minus y comma 1 so you just draw these numbers i'm sorry this is yeah this is open interval this is closed interval right so if you are going to represent these numbers something like 0 and 1 since 1 is also not included and 0 is not included 1 minus y comes here fine here you have an open interval fine in this case you are going to have closed interval so this represent 1 minus y and 1 whereas leaving this num this value apart this uh, distance represent 0 1 minus y open interval closed interval but here it is 1 minus y closed interval 1 is open interval closed interval in the sense this value 1 minus y is included here but it is not the case here why because it is open interval so clearly there is no common element between these two right so there is if there is no common element i can say this as null set if you are going to take intersection with this i can write as null set since e1 intersection e2 is null set therefore they are disjoint i can write they are disjoint now let me take their union so union of those two will be how can i write e intersection 0 comma 1 minus y union with e intersection 1 minus y comma 1 so if you're going to take this i can rewrite this as e intersection see here i'll write this two together 1 minus y union 1 minus y 1 so you can note that these two intervals can be written as 0 1 right e intersection 0 comma 1 i can write i can write like this why because i have already told you i have split the interval closed interval 0 and 1 by taking 1 minus y in between so if you are going to take intersection common element goes up so 0 1 i have taken i'm sorry union without repeating the element so 0 1 i have written obviously 1 minus y will be there in between fine so as i already told you when you are going to take intersection um with uh, 0 1 just by the property of real number i have told you so e1 union e2 can be written as e right a pro in the pro while explaining the properties also i have told you suppose if you are going to take r intersection with any interval you are going to get r only so something like this here e is a real number line so even union e2 will be e and there disjoint that is intersection is equal to null set further what we can say is e1 and e2 are measurable e2 r measurable right uh, why because i have expressed that as uh what we say it is a disjoint set and further their union is equal to whole set e so they are measurable as per the definition of measurability what can i say there exists one more set e which is subset of r right so uh, as per the definition what i told you usual definition is any set e is measurable then there exists a uh, set say a which is subset of r such that we are going to write all those definitions no so i am applying the same property but instead of e i have chosen e here now by the applying the definition of measurability i can write m star of e is equal to m star of since they are even e to are measurable i can apply directly that their union is also measurable fine why because i have already proved this theorem union of two measurable set is also measurable so by that theorem i can say e1 union e2 fine m star of e is equal to m star of e1 union e2 i can say clear i have applied this property directly this, this is this theorem i have proved already you just go through the previous videos m star of e is equal to m star of e1 union e2 now i can split this i have proved this as a corollary for one of the theorem i don't remember exactly the theorem but i have done this fine so i can write this as i have splitted measure inside so union will become plus i can write like this in the sense let me write one more uh, statement here m star of e i can write this as m of e right so m of e1 union e2 i can write this as m of e1 restriction just i am removing the star i am going to write a restricted me restricted measure that is instead of m star i can write like this by combining these two statement i have written this clear now let me define a translation invariant that is suppose if you are going to take set e1 with an element y fine so how the set is defined in the given theorem e plus y is none other than an element in e added with the element y so in the same way i am going to do for e1 e1 plus 
ಈ ಒನ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಲು ವೈ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಆಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಲು ವೈ ಸಸ್ ದಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಈ ಒನ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಆರ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಐ ಹಾವ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಡಿಫೈನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈ ಒನ್ ಐ ಹಾವ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಡಿಫೈನ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಟು ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಜೀರೋ ಕಮ ಒನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ವೈ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಈ ಒನ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಲು ವೈ ಆಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಲು ವೈ ಸಚ್ ದಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗ್ಸ್ ಟು ಈ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ನನ್ ಅದರ್ ದನ್ ಐ ರೈಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ವಲ್ ಐಮ್ ಸಾರಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಓಪನ್ ಇಂಟರ್ವಲ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇಂಟರ್ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ಈ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ what i have done is i can rewrite x belongs to even as x belongs to this set why because even i have already chosen as 0 comma 1 minus y open interval 1 minus y closed interval 0 again as per the property when you are going to take intersection you will get the second set only so again you will get even only so it doesn't make more difference so again i can write this as x plus y such that x belongs to even one and the same or else i can write this as as per the translation invariant property i can write this as e1 plus y right see the statement what it is given e e plus i'm sorry e translation modulo y can be written as x plus y x translation modulo y so as per that property i have defined the set e1 plus i'm sorry translation modulo y as x translation modulo y moreover x belongs to e1 i can write this as the total set intersection of this total set again if you are going to get intersection uh, as per the property i have to write the second set uh, but here you are not going to get translation symbol why because e1 is the total set of these two sets i mean intersection there is no common element between these two sets so i can write x belongs to e1 moreover as per the definition i uh, it is e1 is i'm sorry x plus y is an element in e1 so i can write e1 translation modulo y as e1 plus y clear similarly let me write um, if you want this definition here i'll write c here what i have done is x belongs to 0 comma 1 minus y intersection e i have obtained right now i can write this as x is less than 1 minus y clearly if x belongs to this set x should be less than this value as this value is not included right suppose if you have 0 here 1 minus y here since you have open interval for 1 minus y clearly as per the definition of open interval this element will not be there so whatever the x value you are going to choose that should be less than 1 minus y so i can write the, this as x less than 1 minus y further i am going to shift this so x plus y less than 1 i can write now as per the definition of translation invariant modulo what i have defined see here as per the definition x plus y minus 1 x plus y greater than or equal to 1 so translation modulo x plus y can be written as or else if x plus y greater than or equal to 1 i can write this if x plus y is less than 1 what can i write it as x plus y don't get confusion i am repeating once again see here translation modulo y takes the value x plus y when x plus y is less than 1 fine now what we have obtained is x plus y less than 1 so how can i write x plus y less than 1 as x plus y less than 1 can be written as x plus y fine so i have written this as x plus y this element as x plus y so that is why the translation modulo will not be there clear hope so it is clear similarly let me find e2 translation modulo y i have done for e1 translation modulo y i am going to do it for translation modulo for e2 that will give us translation modulo of x plus y such that x will be in first set e2 as per the given statement given theorem statement i can write like this fine again x translation modulo y x such that x belongs to e2 is defined as this set fine so i'll write that x belongs to e intersection 1 minus y comma open interval 1 just i am replacing e1 and e2 value in both the cases now how can we write like write this as i explain now see here as x belongs to this set in the sense e intersection 1 minus y comma 1 i can write that obviously x will be 
x will be greater than 1 minus y. Why? Because here you have a closed interval. But whereas in the previous uh, case we have an uh, open interval. So if that was the case, let me shift minus y. You will get x plus y is greater than 1. Now go through the prop, uh, definition of translation modulo. See here when x plus y is greater than or equal to 1, I can write that as x plus y minus 1. So let me replace this as x plus y minus 1 as per the definition since it is satisfying the condition I can write this either it may be greater or it may be equal I have to assume this condition so this element translation modulo will become x plus y minus 1 such that x belongs to the center set is e2 as per our representation clear now I can write this as e2 set e2 plus y minus 1 why because x is belongs to a set e2 and again element y minus 1 as it is here also x belongs to e1 plus y as it is in both the cases it is quite similar but you have to remember this condition when you have open interval it will be x will be less than when you have closed interval x will be greater than so that is how i have obtained e2 translation modulo y is equal to e2 plus y minus 1 whereas e1 translation modulo y is equal to e1 plus y Fine. Now, I can write measure of E is equal to measure of E1 plus measure of E2. Right? Why? Because as E is equal to E1 union E2, I can write measure of E1 E as measure of E1 plus measure of E2. That implies I can write measure of E1 plus Y will be equal to I am sorry, translation modulo y will be equal to measure of e1 plus y. In both the cases you can see that this is some form of an element but translation modulo is converted to plus. Here also translation modulo is converted to plus. So from these two conditions I can write measure of e plus i. Since e, this is something like e translation modulo y. This is something like e plus y. So this is also e, e translation modulo y is equal to e plus y. So if you take measure on both sides you will get m star of e translation modulo y is equal to m star of e plus y. So same way I have written this but in place of e I have written e1 translation modulo y. So from these two conditions I can conclude this statement. Fine. Further this value will be equal to measure of e1. Why? Because m is translation invariant. Look at the translation invariant property what it says. Uh, suppose if what it is uh, restriction measure property of restriction measure says that translation invariant property in the sense suppose if you have a set e and if you are going to add any element x again you will get back e only i'll prove i have proved this as a corollary you if you want you can revise it so as per the translation invariant property i can write m of e1 plus y, uh, y as m of e1 fine so what i have arrived is m of e1 translation modulo y is equal to m of e1 now what we have to prove is m of e translation modulo y is equal to m of e. In place of e1 we have e there. So I can replace e1 with e. It is true for all the open sets. So I can write this as measure of e. Fine. This is for one of the element I have proved. If you want you can prove the same for by taking the other element. That is for set e2. I have proved this for e1. If you want let me prove that also. So suppose if you are going to take e2 into y I can write this as measure of e2 plus what I have obtained for e2 it is y minus 1 measure of e2 plus y minus 1 I have obtained now I can write this as measure of e2 fine so I have already done this in second case see here clear I can write this as measure of e2 clearly the same property holds good I can write measure of e is equal to measure of e1 plus measure of e2 if you want I will do that also let me do here so I can write measure of e is equal to measure of e1 plus what I have done for the first case I am doing for second case also fine so I can write this as measure of e1 e1 as per the definition of e1 I can take by the statement e1 plus y plus m of e2 translation modulo y just i have ordered translation modulo y in the previous case so e1 plus e2 i can write this statement as measure of e1 translation modulo y union i can write e2 translation modulo y i have combined these two and i have applied measure for all since e is equal to e1 plus e2 i can write e is equal to e1 plus e2 so i can write both as measure of e plus y so measure of e is equal to measure of e plus y. 
so it is true for both the cases so i have chosen first e1 and i have proved the same for e2 so look at the statement what we have to prove is measure of e plus e translation modulo y is equal to m into e so that is what i have proved me is equal to measure of e translation modulo y fine hope it is clear uh, today you just copy the notes i'll send you the same theorem in group and i'll continue in the next session thank you